what what about the experience of being a programmer in the mid 90s take your average person who considers themselves a professional programmer then versus now it's complicated um again because okay so there are many trends that proceeded over time right one again computers are tremendously faster that helps a lot because you know if you want to do whatever tasks you set your computer to doing while you're programming, they could happen a lot faster. At the same time, though, all the just like all other software, all the tools that programmers use have gotten tremendously slower. So mm. like it takes a lot longer to compile a C++ program today than it did in 1995. Why? Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I still don't completely understand it, but I understand a lot of things about it that people don't seem to want to admit. Yeah. Um, so what, one way of looking at it might be that, yeah. uh, you, you know, this handshake problem where as, as you increase the number of features and they may yeah. all talk to each other, the complexity grows exponentially. So whilst you might think the differences between the word processor in 95 versus today is superficial things like well now you can collaborate online with with other people or yeah uh, now it will render on a 1080 display rather than a little 64480 thing Th those little differences add up and actually push out beyond the edge of yeah they do and that's that's a real thing however <laughs> Right. This is where um, discussions like this, um, like whenever you try to talk to people about how software is doing, right? I, I, I've tried to do this on a number of occasions and I basically there's three groups of people. There's people who don't care at all, like whatever software. Yeah. I don't know. I do, not my life. Right. Yeah. There's like people like myself and my friend group who look at it and say it's a complete disaster. And then there's people who seem to me, who may be a biased observer, to seem very emotionally somehow attached to the idea that software is great and doing well mm. and like are not seeing the same thing that we are seeing. Right. And so yeah. the problem is we're, we're about to step into a place where you see what you want to see. Right. Mm. And I'm going to I'm yeah. going to explain why a little bit. Right. So what you said is exactly true. Um, features do add complexity and you can see this very simply, like I want to add something to my word processor or whatever program it is. I'm going to add some if statements to check if I should do this thing now. That's mm -hmm. code that it takes time for the computer to do those if statements. Right. There's nothing yeah. magical about that. However, what we actually observe is much, 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 much worse than the necessary amount of overhead required to implement the features that we see. And this is something that that happens everywhere. Right. And so people make an argument, especially if they want to think that software is doing well. They say, well, you know, uh, pro as programs grow in complexity, you would expect them to get slower and, and we're solving more difficult problems today and stuff. And OK, that's true a little bit, but you have to say how much you have to ask how much complexity has been added relative to how much complexity should have been added. Right. Mm. And this is a very, very, um, very important question because, you know, I, I wish I had slides. Right. But for people mm -hmm. who know a little bit of math or whatever, you know, imagine you have you're making a little graph. So you have a, a dot or a node and you have another one and you have another one and you just draw lines connecting all of those. Right. So if you have three and you add a fourth one, you're connecting it to three others. And if you have four and you add a fifth one, you're connecting it to four. Uh, everything you add adds more lines to all the other things. Right. And. That's what we call a combinatoric explosion eventually, where it gets very, very expensive to add new pieces, right? Um, and the goal of software engineering in some sense is to prevent, prevent you from having to connect all those lines to all those things. We like compartmentalize. I apologize to people if this is too abstract to make sense, but you know, we compartmentalize just, yeah. them thing 
and, and we try to prevent them from interacting, right? That's yeah. like good software engineering, but we usually fail at good software engineering, right? And so what happens is as a program grows, you spend an inordinate amount of energy dealing with the constraints that are already in place. And the friction goes up and up until you can't do anything anymore, right? And so it is incredibly important to keep that friction down, especially in long live projects. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, what does keeping that friction down mean? Well, it means reducing those number of constraints between things, which is minimizing the complexity. And, and this is where it's very important to be clear about things, right? Because people will argue solving problems is complex. It involves complexity. And then they use that as an excuse to justify the complexity that they see in current software. But it's not right because there's a certain amount of complexity that is required to solve a problem, right? Like whatever mm -hmm. is the algorithmic complexity of that problem. Um, but usually when we sit down and write software, we're not perfect. And so mm -hmm. our implementation is more complicated than it needs to be, right? It maybe even gets wrong answers sometimes or doesn't handle all the inputs and all these things. And then, and, and so what we build is always more complex than, than what it should be ideally. Mm -hmm. And the problem is because complexity interacts with complexity in a super linear way, it explodes. Then the worse you do now, the worse you do in the future. It's like compound interest in a bank account, but like right. a very bad version of that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And so it, what we've got today is it, a lot of compound interest. So much so like, you know, I, I actually had an exercise where I sat down um, and like, if you just look at everything, you try to look at everything that exists to make a computer run today, which you can't even, nobody actually understands everything, right? Mm. But you sort of look at the parts you understand very well and you ex extrapolate out to the parts you vaguely understand and you say, okay, but what do I actually need to do what we're doing? Like, let's just say I wanted to run my desktop environment and run the programs that I run and do the things that I do. Like, how much of what we have right now do you actually need to do that? Hmm. I don't actually know, but it's easily far less than 10%. It's, it's uh, probably a lot less than 1% or 0.1%, right? Like, it's... yeah it's really a lot less. And, you know, if you could somehow wave a magic wand and make that happen, um, a lot of things would be better, right? Mm. Now that's not really possible to do that. Um, but I think it's important to at least be able to observe that so that moving forward, you can sort of notice problems in your own stuff and see like, okay, how do I, how do I deal with this? How do I, how do I stop sliding into this like pit of despair and horribleness that we've been sliding <laughs> into for decades? 